$800,000 for photography degree. That's not education, people. This is not education. We are looking at a Ponzi scheme, okay? This is an unbelievable amount of money to pay. I don't care how long it took her to get. It's just so crazy that I couldn't get over it. I had to come read it to you all because I couldn't just read this comment and then not tell a bunch of people about it because that's how insane it was to me. Aloha, folks, and we are back. In the temporary studio, still. In the temporary <laughs> studio, but that's okay. I am very excited for this week's episode because I teased it, you teased it, really, on last week's episode, which is why I'm going to do it on this week's episode, even though it was really just a thought when you teased it. It was an idea, a whisper. But we're going to do it this week. I'm going to try to go quickly, and this is going to be a short episode. The reason why is because we don't have a lot of time while we are recording this, but we want to get this information out to you every week like we have been doing nonstop for the last two years. Because we work so hard, I definitely think that you should subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and share this episode or any episode that you've liked with a friend. Friends don't let friends not hear the Degree Free podcast. Friends don't let friends not listen to Degree Free. I think I've seen that on a bumper sticker. I definitely have seen it on a bumper sticker. I have. I can verify. Perfect. Let's jump into it. So today, last week, we teased about marketing and about colleges being the most effective marketers. I think that colleges are the most effective marketers in the world. Like really, really, really like the college industrial complex, the academic industrial complex all together as a whole, best marketers in the entire world. In as the US. We, yes, you're absolutely right. I take that back. Yeah. In the US. I don't know about the world. I live in the US. And so in the US. And really what I find so interesting, and we've talked about it last week, was they were able to capture an entire age bracket of like six years of people, right? Like college age kids. And so we teased last week that we're going to talk about the different marketing tactics and the different things and the different ways that colleges have marketed to you and your family forever, or at least for the past however many years. 40 years. Yeah. 40 to, 40 60, to 60 years. Yeah. 40 to 70 years. Ever since the government started subsidizing student loans, right. basically. Exactly. <laughs> and so I am going to start this new segment. And I'm not sure how often I'm going to do this segment because it kind of takes a little bit of thought and it takes a little bit of preparation, but I'm going to start with AP courses. Ooh. I mean, there's a bunch of places that we could start, but I'm going to start there because that is one of the most non-obvious ways that college marketing has invaded into high schoolers' lives and high school parents' lives, right? Which is advanced placement courses. What makes advanced placement courses so brilliant is that they are having you do something and work towards something that you haven't even purchased yet. They are making you make the purchase decision years before you actually make the purchase decision. It is brilliant. They're saying, here's some free samples that we're going to get you. We're going to give you three credits right here. You just have to take AP psychology and you just have to pass this AP exam. So the kid in high school goes, they spend all of this time. They spend all of this effort the whole year studying for AP psychology. And you know, they're in high school. So they want something to strive for. They want a goal and they want to do well and they want to succeed. And so they're putting in all this effort. Really? Why? Well, it's to get college credit. And so if they score a one or a two. It's been so long since I was in high school. Yeah, I forgot. I think it goes one through five. And I believe that five is the lowest and one is the highest. I believe if it's that's not correct, it's the opposite, but I do believe that it's one. So if you get like a one or two, most colleges accept those credits, you know, seemingly they're just like, wow, what a great deal because then I get to save so much money when you finally go. And then some places like, oh, well, my kid gets an associate's degree when they get out of college, but they still have to go and pay two more years worth of tuition in order to get a four-year degree. 
AP classes are the equivalent of a two night stay in Vegas for a timeshare. That's exactly. exactly what it is because they say, oh, well, you know, you take these classes and we'll give you college credit, except for in order to actually purchase the thing and actually get access to the thing, you have to pay the college their money. Same thing with the timeshare. Like you can borrow it for a little bit, but if you actually want this, you know, if you actually want to get the stay, you have to sit through the presentation and then you have to buy. <laughs> right. It makes a lot of sense because the likelihood that you are going to make the purchase decision when you're 18 much higher. is much higher if you have been spending two years, one, two, three years, some places in high school trying to gain all of these college credits, right? And then you've literally put time, effort, blood, sweat, and tears into passing these exams. And so now when you're 17, 18 years old and you're about to graduate, you're like, well, man, while I was studying for my AP exam, all of my other friends who weren't in AP they were doing whatever. And I'll speak for myself. This got me, right? Like, which is why I know AP courses are so good at marketing because I knew at 16 years old when I was a junior in high school that I was going to go to college. I took AP whatever classes that I could get my hands on. And it was for the exact same reason. It's like, okay, well, the purchase decision is pretty much made. So I might as well try to get as much free stuff as possible right? Try to get as much free credits as possible. But when I became 17, 18 years old, it was never a decision for me of whether or not I should continue going on. But I guarantee if you had asked me like, Hey, do you still want to go to college? Is that a good idea? I'd be like, yeah, of course I want to go. I just spent two years of my life studying for these AP exams while I was studying for AP exams while I was taking my AP exams. All of my friends were outside. I was in the library taking this dumb test. For me, I think I, I took like four AP classes of my entire high school. I think that I passed one of them. You know, it's funny that you say that, but they had you make the decision before they had you make the decision. Our podcast listeners know this, but if this is a TikTok clip, then people might not know. But I did go to college for, I was fully dual enrolled where I was going to high school. That was something you were allowed to do. I started the process at like 16. And so I was fully in college my entire senior year of high school. I clept and I also took AP classes. And so they did the same thing to me. That's how they got me. I'm doing the calculus for my credits and how they're going to transfer in so that I can pay less money, but I'm still going to pay the college. I'm still going to pay the man. They got me. I never even made a conscious decision. I just did it. And so I did want to go from the business perspective, right? So we we're talking about marketing on this podcast today. And so if I was a business and I was selling a product that was $100,000 over four years, that's what we're advertising is four years, but we know it's going to take five and a half years, right? And it's 120 credits or so, or at least it was when I was in college, or it's 124 when I was in college. And you literally couldn't graduate in four years, even if you took five classes. It was crazy. And we've talked about this at length, so I'm not going to go into it. But if I was selling a 120 credit product in order to secure a purchase of a hundred grand, you don't think that I would give you a couple of credits for free? Of course you would. Of course I would. You know what I mean? Get like, the loan. Yeah. I'll give you three to 15 credits. I'll give you three. And some people are saying, well, my kid came out with an associate's degree. Okay. I'll give you 60 credits for free. Sure. Don't want your money. <laughs> You're still going to pay me 50 grand. That's something that I see a lot is I actually think that the AP courses are way less for the kid and it's way more for the parents because they like to be able to brag that their kid is in these advanced courses, right? And I'm not saying that those courses are not more advanced than your typical classes they are, but the fact that they have pre-tied them to college credit you need to understand that that's a problem. You need to understand that they're pre-framing you to make a very expensive purchase. They're pre-framing your child to make it. They're pre-framing you to sign this loan. And if you want your kid to take advanced classes, that's fine. But just keep in mind that that is what they are pushing your child into. And you need to understand that too. Because you can say, yeah, my kid's taking these advanced courses, but they're already so far ahead in college. It's like, do they need the college degree? Because if they don't, you're still pushing them into that because they went and took AP classes in high school. That is a huge waste of their time and it's a huge waste of money. Are the classes harder 
some of them are, a lot of them are, and that's why they're supposed to be advanced placement, right? They're supposed to be literally be college level classes in high school. Some parents might say, okay, well, my child is just going to advanced placement because they really want to learn this material, but they don't care about the actual college credit. And for some people, that might be true. Sure, that might be true. But if this impressionable teenager is around all of his other peers that are also trying to gain college credit. They are the ones that are doing the work. And if they lose sight of like, oh, I just wanted to do it so I could learn more about it and they want to go to college, well, you know, now you're on the hook for a hundred thousand dollar purchase. And look, I'm not saying that there's any right or wrong. It might be the right choice for them to go to college. You can go back to our last episode or two episodes ago, we'll put links in the show notes to grieffree.co forward slash podcast, the three different conversations that you need to have with your teenager. And so if you have that conversation with your teenager and you decide that, okay, yeah, college is the right thing, then that's fine. I'm just saying that you should remember the goal. Yeah. And you also have to remember too, that there's teachers and guidance counselors telling them that they need to buy a college degree in order to succeed in life. And all of this pressure is on them. And that's all day. They're at school all day. And that's what they hear. So just keep it in mind. Yeah, it's really brilliant because it gets them forgetting about making the decision. They've already done it, right? And they're earning those credits by putting in all of the time and effort to study. And because you are earning it, you are going to value it much, much more. They're going to make them feel like they lost something if they choose not to go into student debt. Exactly. Understand that. That's how they're setting your kid up. And so you're going to look and your guidance counselor is going to say, well, you already have three credits towards this, right? You already have your associate's degree. You might as well just go for two years, finish up and get your bachelor's degree. That might be the right answer. That might be the wrong answer. I'm not sure. I don't know your situation, but just know that is how they are using AP courses in their marketing. Mm -hmm. And it is incredibly, incredibly effective. They just took the purchase decision that you were supposed to make two years in the future and they brought that to the present. And they had your child already make it. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they made your child make that decision at 16 years old, 15 years old, however old they are when they're starting to take these advanced placement Before courses. they have a driver's license. It is brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant marketing. If I was running a massive business where I knew that I was going to make a hundred grand off of you regardless, I would give you a few shekels. Here you go. It's a lead magnet is what they call it in marketing. It's a lead magnet. And there's like, here you go. It's for free. It's for free. Except for for that's the most expensive free thing you're ever ever going to get. Exactly. It really is. (laughs) Yep. Because it's going to be your time, your energy, and your money. Yep. Definitely. Definitely. If y'all listening to this... And I would love it here if you liked this segment. And I kind of like doing it, so I might do it regardless. But if you like this segment, like really, 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 then comment on YouTube. Go to the YouTube channel, comment on YouTube, and let me know that you liked it because I have a lot of ideas or I've thought a lot about the marketing that colleges do. And if that's something that interests you and you want to see and you want to know how they are getting you to pay all this money. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Let me know right now. All right. And now to my favorite, to my favorite segment of the podcast that we've started to do recently, which is unhinged TikTok comments. <laughs> this one's actually not a TikTok comment. It's uh, something I found on Twitter and it was about uh, Columbia, our favorite Ivy League hedge fund. I don't know what it is that film graduates are smoking. But I would love some of that stuff because the film graduate, I have never seen a student debt total from a film grad that has not shocked me. Like to this day, I don't know how they get them to do it. But and maybe it's just the people who just go, yeah, I can afford to do that. I don't know if anyone's out there considering getting a film degree and thinking they can afford it. But no, you can't. Because what is that? One of the reasons why is a lot of the film schools are really, really expensive. A lot of the colleges that offer film degrees are expensive universities. Aha, there it is. Yeah. And so a lot of the ones that are prestigious are private as well. 
oh, that's what it is. That's why it's and on so, such a ridiculous curve. Okay. Yes. And so a lot of the film people, they pay a lot. Through more. the nose. Yeah. They pay a lot more than your average person paying for a degree at your state college. And then once again, as we said before, it matters obviously on age as well. They've only been making interest only payments or minimum payments or just kept deferring payment, whatever, whatever, whatever. Well, it's worse than that. The interest (laughs) payments can just eat you alive. So like I was saying, that actually makes a lot of sense. But what I want to read you all is this little snippet that I found on Twitter. And it says, recent film program graduates of Columbia University, our favorite resident academic hedge fund, uh, who took out federal student loans, had a median debt, do you want to guess? Of, I want to say, $90,000, final answer. Recent film program graduates of Columbia University, RIP, who took out federal student loans, had a median student debt of $181,000. Dang. Median. So for those of you listening to the podcast or seeing this clip, you know that we're big here on if the information is available, we always want to find the median first for money because it's more accurate than your average usually. It's going to give you a better picture of what it's looking like for most of the people who are in this situation. $181,000 is crazy. (laughs) That's crazy. And two years after earning their master's degrees, half of the borrowers were making less than $30,000 a year. There is little to no hope of paying that back ever. They'll never catch up on the interest. They can't even pay the principal on those loans. There's no way they can't do it. The other thing that a lot of people tend to overlook is that if you buy a degree in one of these really niche fields, you're going to have to go to a city to find that type of work. And if you move to a city, what happens? Your cost of living goes up. Yeah. And you won't be able to exist. There's that. Take that into account. Please don't buy a film degree. And I'm going to follow that up with this other comment that made me almost throw up. And so (laughs) this comment is by far the worst student debt I've ever seen in a comment. I have an aunt with a photography major with (laughs) $800,000. student debt. I like can't even say it without having a heart attack. I'm laughing because of panic. It's not, I'm not laughing at her. I actually am really sorry that she's in this situation because the stress that I'm getting from just thinking about that situation, I can't even imagine. The most insane part about this, $800,000 for photography degree. That's not education, people. This is not education. We are looking at a Ponzi scheme. Okay. This is an unbelievable amount of money to pay. I don't care how long it took her to get. It's just so crazy that I couldn't get over it. I had to come read it to you all because I couldn't just read this comment and then not tell a bunch of people about it because that's how insane it was to me. Where would you even start taking yourself out of that? Hey there. I hope you're enjoying this episode of the Degree Free Podcast. At Degree Free, we want to help everyone thrive and succeed without needing a college degree. And the only way to truly reach everyone is with your help. If you're getting value out of this episode, or if this is your second, third, or fourth episode that you're tuning into, if you could just ship this to a friend, just click that one button and share it with someone in your contacts or on your stories. It would mean the world to us. And more importantly, gets our message out to more people who need help getting out of their current situation. If you could do that right now, that would mean a whole lot. Probably not working in photography. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not not trying to be mean. I just can't. I'm sweating. I'm like panic sweating from this $800,000 of debt. We went over it and you went over it last week. And I think you did a really good job of it, right? Which is last week you were talking about this person being $170,000 in debt and they didn't know what to do. And the advice then is the same advice now, which is learn a high value skill and then do that thing. It goes back to putting your pride away. And it goes back to, I don't care if you have a degree in photography. I don't care if you got a degree in whatever it is you got a degree in. doesn't matter. Equestrian. If that's not working out for you, then you have to stop what you're doing, reevaluate, okay, what is going on? Because obviously whatever it is that I'm doing right now is not working. No. And so I have to literally do anything else but what I'm doing right now. A good place to start 
is finding a high value skill, like you said, and then doing that as a job doesn't matter. And you had a really good suggestion. Sales is always necessary. It's necessary in every business, everywhere. Learn how to sell and go sell your ass off. Yeah. Go sell, 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 sell. And pay down debt as fast as possible. Yep. At the risk of sounding like Dave Ramsey. When you're done paying that off. Go back to your photography. Yeah. Go back to doing whatever it is that you're going to do. When you go back to your photography, do not buy a master's degree. When you go back to your photography, oh, I want to be a photographer. Okay. The correct line here is go buy a camera. Okay. For those of you that have got kids that are like, I want to go into photography. I'm going to go get a photo. No, 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 no. We don't buy photography degrees. We don't buy film degrees. We go get cameras. We go buy cameras. This is the first thing that we do. If your child, if this comes out of their mouth, the first thing they do is they go and you buy them a camera or better yet, you make them buy a camera. You make them work to do something to buy a camera. And then you help them find editing software. And then you let them see if they actually pursue that for one. And then two, if your kid wants to make money, do Doing that, the first thing you do is you take free portrait photos of family and friends for free, and then you slowly start charging 50 bucks and then a hundred bucks. And then you post about it on social media and you see if you get any interest. Let them improve, let them edit, let them learn how to do it. That's how you test that. If they want to do stills, if they want to do nature, if they want to do whatever, they go take those photos, they edit them, and then they try to sell them on a stock photo website. That is the correct line of action to test that. We don't buy degrees in these things before we actually do them. It is insane. Yeah, I have a friend, he might be listening to this podcast right now that has a degree in film. And he actually did employ his degree. Uh, He did film editing for like 10 years. He will be the first to tell you that so many people in the industry, so many people that he worked around didn't have college degrees because you don't need a college degree for that type of work. You don't. What you need is work. You need a solid portfolio of work. You need to go and do whatever it is that you want to do in that industry. You want to be a photographer? Go and take photographs. You want to be a videographer? Go and shoot some video. You want to be a director? Go and direct some videos. You know what I mean? You want to be a producer? Go produce things. Like That is what you have to do in order to get into that type of work and into those fields. I know that it sounds very, very rudimentary, but obviously, you know what I mean? Like people still need to hear it because then you go and you get a film degree and you get a photography degree and, and you still have to do that. And you, by the way, when, after you get those things and you do work in those industries, just like how my friend worked in that industry, when you get there, you're going to find that there are people there that have been there for the five and a half years that you were in college and they're better than you. You were in college learning how to tap kegs watching citizen kane (laughs) you know what i mean like you were doing that and they were here working and look and they know people and they have references you have the same job yeah you have the same job that person might even make more money than you because they have five years of experience doing that they're probably going to i just did an interview on a detroit nbc station and the producer that was on talked about how he worked his way up and the news anchor was actually talking to him like after the interview was over the news anchor was actually talking to him about how he had worked his way up he just made good right he's a producer he's a television news producer but he just got on set and started working that's what you do and he's like this is the way that you do it and he actually talked about his experience a little bit so for those of you that whose kids want to be in like sports or tv production or or radio that's a big thing literally walk your kid into that place or have your kid better yet have your kid walk themselves into that place and try to get work it doesn't matter if it's for free at first that industry especially it's all people it's all people it's all who you know it's all where you are being in the room like Go get your kid in that environment, get them exposed to that work, let them start knowing people who work in that industry because that's how they're going to learn. Yep. I think I'm really excited for this episode to come out and I'm really excited for you guys to hear it. I'm excited to get your feedback. As always, go to YouTube, comment, let me know how this was. I think this was a heater. I think it was too. I liked it. I like it. Would do again. Would do again. Awesome. Until next week, guys. Long.